Good morning. I want to let you know that today's sermon and our liturgy is based on the lectionary for All Saints Day. Now, today is not All Saints Day, and we're not doing a full-on All Saints Day service. And today's sermon is not exactly an All Saints Day sermon, although it's related. But I would like to propose that maybe next year we do an All Saints Day service. That would be on a Thursday evening. Uh, and, uh, I mean, obviously we'll talk about it later on, but uh, be thinking on that. Let me know what you think about doing a Thursday night service next November 1st uh, for All Saints Day. Uh, did we have anybody show up an hour early today? <laughs> if it weren't for my phone automatically setting itself, I would have been. <laughs> but, uh, and this is after I announced the time change a dozen times on the radio this week, so... And I'll tell you how my brain works, or it really doesn't work. Um, I've got a lot of words to say to all of you about last week in the affirmation service and uh, everything that went into it and everything it means. And I'm not going to do that now. I uh, will be composing a letter uh, because I will get choked up and not be able to complete actually saying all the things I have to say to you about last week. Uh, it is still with me. I'm not over it. And I might not ever be over it. Uh, but uh, I will just say this, thank you, and I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, now, hopefully my brain is fully engaged, unlike it was with the time change, and let's engage our hearts and our souls. If you would, please join me in our call to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast to the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. And if you would join me in our opening prayer. Eternal God, hope of all who trust in you. In Christ you weep with those who mourn, even as you cry out in triumph over the grave. Unbind us from sin, release us from captivity, and with Lazarus raise us from death to life so that we may join the great crowd of saints who forever sing praise to your holy name through Christ, the resurrection and the life. Amen. And if you're able to stand, please do so and join us in singing hymn number 482, Praise Ye the Lord the Almighty, number 482.
Although God has given the church the message of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ, we fall short of God's call to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Let's now confess our misdeeds first with our silent prayers and then our corporate prayer, which you will find in the bulletin. Let us pray. Join me. Faithful God, source of every blessing, teach us to love our enemies, to bless those who curse us, to pray for those who persecute us, to turn the other cheek, to share our possessions, to give those who are in need, and to do to others as we would have them do to us. Father, we confess we have not done these things. Please teach us so that we may join that company of blessed saints who feast with you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. confirm what we believe with the Apostles' Creed. Join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you guys you want to do announcements or is it? Do you want to do them? Uh, I can, yes. We're going to do those or we're going to do children's okay. things. All right. Uh, let's, uh, I'm going to go through the bulletin here with some announcements. If I miss something, somebody yell at me and let me know. Uh, one thing I can tell you about is uh, Jessica and I were at a meeting about uh, doing the shoe boxes. What is it? Uh, I can't remember the name of the Operation Christmas Child. And uh, there's a couple of things with that coming up including uh, stuffing the shoe boxes. That's coming up on November 19th. That'll be after church. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, the items that are needed, uh, you can get a list. Uh, but it's uh, you don't want to do any war toys or any soldiers or things like that, but small toys, uh, toiletries. But it can't be any liquids. So uh, that includes toothpaste because it's got to get through customs. And did I miss anything else? School supplies. School supplies. Uh, no liquid glue, but glue sticks are fine, that sort of thing. You just can't do any liquids because it's got to go through customs. And miscellaneous. I think there is there a insert in your bulletin? Oh, nope, there is. Just miscellaneous socks, T-shirts, uh, underwear, hats. Shoes, those sorts of things. And uh, the difference it can make in a, the life of a child uh, is staggering. So I would encourage everyone to give as you can. And, uh, and then we'll uh, uh, do our stewardship luncheon and then uh, stuff us from shoe boxes. And stewardship luncheon will be uh, soup and sandwiches. Uh, and there is not a 
and sign up sheet in the narthex. There will be next Sunday. There will be a sign-up sheet next Sunday for another thing, too. By the way, is some of those sandwiches going to be grilled cheese? They might be. All right, that's, I think that might be a requirement. I think if you're going to have soup, it needs to be a grilled cheese. <laughs> According, at least in the Nunley family, that's the way it goes. Um, uh, uh, in December, uh, and it will either be the 2nd or the 9th, which are Saturdays, we're going to ring bells for the Salvation Army uh, at the Walmart in Williamson. Uh, we'll need at least six people to volunteer if we get 12. It'll be an hour and a half apiece, so it won't be a thing where you're stuck there all day. And believe it or not, that gets really tiring really fast, and your ears will be ringing. Yeah, but uh, it, it, the Red Kettle campaign is where they get 80% of their funding for all the things they do for people. And uh, I figured that we could all get together on one Saturday and give about an hour and a half. Uh, I will have a sign-up sheet and an exact date, and I'll put it in the Narthex next week. Uh, other announcements? Um, we're going to be decorating the church for Advent on December 2nd. Uh, I'm not one that you will really want doing that. I can bring in boxes and uh, be a nice plow horse. But if you need somebody to be artist, I'm not that guy, so I will help. Uh, but uh, I would encourage everybody to come for that one. Uh, did I miss anything that uh, before then? Oh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you to Brenda. Uh, Oh, for the meet and treat, right. Um, I, I'd forgotten about that. Uh, you know, that's the one of the things that uh, is so fun about Halloween. When I was a kid, a lot of churches had this big objection to Halloween. And now most of them do a Halloween thing. Uh, and uh, uh, to see that come around and to see us be able to reach out to the community like that, something special, I think. Um, also, a um, couple of other things that uh, I can tell you about is... Uh, we, uh, we will do another cluster gathering like we did last Sunday. It's Logan's turn to host. But the next fifth Sunday, that's when we do these cluster gatherings, is on any time there's a fifth Sunday. This time, the next fifth Sunday is New Year's Eve. And uh, so we're going to do it the following week, even though it's not a fifth Sunday, because uh, we figure that New Year's Eve is going to be a tough day to get any of that done. Uh, we will have church, though, so don't try to get out of that just because you're going to go party that night. You want to go to church first. Uh, did, are there any other announcements? Anything I'm missing? Uh, can I ask a question? Oh, please. There's session on the 19th. When will that be? Uh, the 19th. Uh, Sunday. 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 After the stewardship luncheon and a happy party. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And just PWs this week, and field practice will be after that. Uh, so, uh, in case you didn't hear that, PWs this coming Wednesday. At 5.30, and then bell practice will happen right after that. Can we uh, share some joys and concerns? Uh, uh, let's start with joys. Our celebration last week. And that was something else. Lucille Hatfield. Uh, yeah, Lucille Hatfield uh, uh, seems to be doing better, and uh, I'm going to try to get over to Thomas to visit her sometime this week. Uh, and anyone who wants to join me can. I, I don't know what day and time yet. It'll depend on... Uh, work schedules and all that, but uh, uh, she was in, uh, from what I understand, some pretty serious condition and is now, uh, has gotten uh, somewhat better. Uh, so uh, we'd like to add her to our prayers as well uh, for a continued recovery. Do you know if she's in CCU or not? They were telling us last I heard it was CCU, but I don't know if she's still in that unit or not. If she uh, was getting dialysis, uh, and is still getting dialysis. She'll still be in CCU, but I, I don't know that, that for a fact. Yeah. And, and I'll try, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, 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 ascertain times and, and all that stuff and go to our, uh, our Facebook Messenger and st start spreading the word that way. One thing I am going to have to do is next week is, is put a sheet out there to where you guys can have all my phone numbers and email addresses to get a hold of me. But I'd like to be able to get a hold of everybody else, too. Uh, like, I have no idea uh, what Kurt Lester's phone number is. And I might want to call him at 3 o'clock in the morning to harass him. <laughs> All right, great. That, perfect. I know not everybody's on Facebook. I sometimes wish I wasn't, but uh, so we need to probably need to do some of the more traditional communication methods. 
and I promise I won't really call you at 3 o'clock in the morning unless I really, really want to. <laughs> Wake up, Lester. <laughs> Get up. Um, any other joys? Uh, and I, I'll say this again about last week. Uh, I'm still deeply affected by it. Uh, and um, uh, But what we, having all those Presbyterians from all those three churches here and to do what we were doing and moving forward with the future here and uh, for all time uh, is something I'll never get over. But there were so many people who had to make so many different efforts to make all that happen. And not just with the Presbytery agreeing to affirm me. It, it isn't even about me. But uh, to make lo just the logistics of that service happen took a lot of different efforts. So, again, I'll say thank you to everyone who did even the smallest thing or some of the very large things that had to happen. Uh, any other joys? The sun is coming through again. The sun is coming out again. Uh, and uh, Which means hopefully I won't have to rake leaves or mow grass because it will still be too wet. I, I, that is my hope as well, and I wish I could have been here uh, just to see it uh, and uh, to steal some of their candy. <laughs> All right, not really steal it. Uh, see if they wanted to be sharing. Oh yeah, they they they, they put me one together. <laughs> uh, well, uh, considering the number of desserts I took home to my neighbors last week. Uh, and uh, I will admit that I set aside a pumpkin roll for myself out of all that. Uh, but uh, for those of you, uh, I took a, a ton of food home with me. To I've got neighbors in need all around me, and they don't always get um, things like some of these desserts we had, and uh, it was a joy to see them get that. They, they, their appreciation knows no bounds because it's not something they can normally afford. Uh, uh, they have trouble with just the basics, much less something like a fancy dessert uh, uh, is not something they get very often. And uh, uh, so I'll give you their thanks as well. Do we have uh, concerns? I'll start by saying let's continue to pray for Lucille uh, that her recovery will be complete and quick. J.C. Brennan. J.C. Brennan. Donnie Bourne. I'll add my mother to this. She's going to have to have a procedure on her heart in December and has uh, a myriad of other health issues. Um, it's not as bleak as it sounds, but uh, it is concerning. Uh, and so I'll ask you to add her uh, to your prayers. Her name is Carol. Carol Jean uh, Nunley. Oh, please, thank you. Carla Evans. And uh, I'll add Ruth to that. Yeah. Please remember John as well. To all of us uh, who have people and to all the people who are in some form of suffering or another, whether it be economic suffering or suffering with illness, I ask that we remember all people who are in need in prayer as well. Our neighbors that are very close here in the Coalfield counties of West Virginia, but our neighbors who are across the ocean in other countries as well. Let's remember all these in prayer today and throughout the week. Oh, uh, uh, the, is it still spaghetti in the cans? Mm -hmm. uh, so for the food bank, uh, uh, you'd be surprised how much nutritional value there is in that canned spaghetti. Uh, it's got lots of protein. It's got carbs, of course, and uh, lycopene and some other things. And it's uh, 
a, a way to easily help. And the best ones to get are the ones that have the pull-off can, just in case there's not a can opener available. Yes. And before we go to our uh, children, we need to have a birthday that we need to Oh, yeah. Absolutely, we should. Speech time. kids want to come up, I, I, I got something for you. You guys go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Have you ever heard that song, and maybe somebody who can actually sing can uh, 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 sing at least the first uh, couple of words of it, uh, this little line of mine, have you guys heard of that song before? Now, can you tell me what you think that's all about? Go right ahead. It's about a light. It is about a light, yes. <laughs> See, give me a pound on that when you nail it. Uh, what, uh, what it is, is the light that comes from belief and love in Jesus. Uh, I'll give you an example right here. This is just a... Here, have some strength. Uh, just a piece of plastic, right? No big deal. All right? But just like just being a person, it's not that really big a deal until you love Jesus, believe in Jesus, and Jesus loves you right back. And by the way, Jesus loves you all the time. So what happens, just hang right on to it. Uh, actually, I, I'm going to let you have it so you can drive your parents crazy with it. And set up traps, stuff like that in your house. Go right there. Don't worry. They won't, you won't have to throw it. Um, but what happens when the love of Christ gets inside you and the belief of Christ is how you do it, uh, is how you <coughs> live, well, it's not just a piece of plastic anymore. You start getting a light. And that's what that, this little light of mine is all about. It is a glow stick. It was just a piece of plastic. Now it's a glow stick because, as we're talking about, with the light of Christ. So here's what you want to do. Don't hide your light under a bushel. When you're out at school or anywhere else, live like you know you should, because you know that Jesus loves you, and that God loves you, and that you're an actual life. So now what I'm going to do is give you all a couple of these. There's a red one, there's a red one. Let me see if I can find a... Uh, nope. Now see, you get an extra one for getting John the Baptist last week. <laughs> so uh, I'm giving you this one right here. I got a bunch of these. Now, what you want to do is save one, so just in case you need a reminder about Jesus loving you, and that makes you a light, and we can all do one right now. I'll show you how it works. You ready? Have a All right, so take it, hold it like this, bend it, so you hear that snap, and then shake it up. Just bend it like that. You almost got it. Let me show you again. So you just do it like this. Put your thumbs right there. Hear that? And then shake it up. I know you're jealous. I thought I might have to send one your way. When you're going by, give Kurt one. Well, I'll give you some more because you, uh, you actually uh, have the John the Baptist on. Let me make sure you've done some extras. So, again, these are simple little toys. And they, they're not exactly the same as having the light of Jesus. But I want you to think about that from now on. When things look like they're bad, when you're upset, uh, when it looks like you've got troubles, remember that Jesus loves you and you always have his light. Even after these burn out, you always will have his light. So there you go. There's another one and another one. 
that's what those strings are originally for, and then I'll see if Mr. Lester really, really wants one. <laughs> Anyone else? Who might have a little light? Hey, I was hot enough to throw things in church, so maybe I, I, I could throw a couple of my old uh, uh, grandfather's rules. Don't be throwing stuff in church. Here's another one. And I think that I've oh, looked for this much more than strings. I guess y'all really want that. I mean, you can make a necklace out of these things. You want them? You can have them. There you go. There are, and I'm sorry to take up so much time with this, uh, there are two more. Uh, give me an adult who's really a child, who really, really wants a lot. Yeah. You can pass it to her in your way over there. Thank you all so much. Will you say a little prayer with me? Jesus, we thank you for your love that gives us light even when it's dark. We give you our obedience, and we give you above all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our love. Amen. Thank you all so much. I told you I'd get the glow sticks done one day. Let's do a hymn number 430, Come Sing. O oh, Church, enjoy number 430. If you would, join me in a very quick prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Our first reading today is Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be, uh, to be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. 
The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them through springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our second reading is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1-3. to Hear now the word of the Lord. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What he will be has not yet been revealed. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all those who have hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Hear now the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Now, three things I have for you today. What heaven is like, John goes off, and a lot more than just pretty words. So, what heaven is like, John goes off, and a lot more than pretty words. So, what is heaven like? If we're to be honest, there is really no way for an earthbound human being to truly know what heaven is like. It's not that we're without imagination. We've got plenty of that. It's that the glory and joy of heaven and what is there and what it's like is just beyond our capacity to know. And that doesn't stop us from trying to imagine it. I guess the stock answer is a lot of happy people doing the things they love most, and but they're doing it on a cloud, apparently. That's uh, the big image we usually have. Everything's on a cloud. Or we have more personal images of heaven when it comes to being reunited with loved ones. Or playing golf at our favorite golf course in perfect weather. Playing ping pong with Jimi Hendrix. Or maybe having a peanut butter and banana sandwich with Elvis. Um, I think being reunited with loved ones that have passed into eternal life is one that's universal to all of us when we're trying to imagine what heaven is like. This is because the loss of someone we love, even though we know they've gone on to something infinite and gone on to something infinitely better than anything on the best day on earth, it hurts. It hurts bad. And losing someone you love to death is the hardest thing you can do that you can be part of that happens to you. And I think that's why one of the universal, I guess, imaginings of heaven is reuniting with our loved ones. Now, I can't imagine there's anyone in this sanctuary that has yet to lose someone. All of us are riding on that not-so-merry-go-round of grief and then acceptance and more grief and being okay and then back to more grief. We're all dragging around ghosts. We're dragging around the chains of grief for our lost loved ones. For those of us in here who don't know, for those of you who don't know, my father passed away in March of this year. Friday was his birthday. Now, usually birthdays of loved ones who've passed on or anniversaries of their deaths or other dates don't really get to me. Uh, it's just not how grief works for me. I'm a lot more prone to having a random memory of a loved one prompt me into grief or maybe coming across one of their possessions. I was in the garage a couple of weeks ago and found some of my dad's old tools that he had gotten from his father. And it reminded me of both my grandfather and my father, and it gave me a little spiral into some depression and grief. But for some reason this year, my dad's birthday got to me. That was Friday. As I was standing at his grave weeping, all I could think of was yes. Knowing that he's out of this world of suffering, knowing that he finished his race and was with God and all the saints in heaven, knowing that one day we'll be reunited, 
Oh, that did make me feel better. But I still wish my dad was here instead of there. Now, I'm 100%, 100% sure that's not what he wants. <laughs> I can pretty well imagine what he has to say about that. Like, hold on, boy, I've already been down in that mess. Uh, it, 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 no, I'm not coming back into that Juliacus. And by the way, Juliacus was one of my dad's made-up words he liked to use instead of cuss words. Uh, in the midst of reading the scripture and writing this sermon, that it came into my head that that would be what his reaction was to me standing there at his grave crying. It was like, uh-uh, I'm not coming back there. I'm here now. I I'm done. And we'll be together soon enough. For him, it'll be a blink of an eye, even if it's years for me. And there was joy in knowing that, and hearing his voice in my head sort of uh, make the kind of jokes and the wry comments he always did. So that personal vision of heaven is entirely, pretty much, at least in part, the same vision we all have with our loved ones who we lost. But I'll ask you to remember this. When you are on that not-so-merry-go-round, remember the last words from the passage. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No matter what our personal images of heaven are, the one common thread is unbridled joy. Joy with no sadness. All sad things being made untrue. This passage from Revelation, although like the rest of the book, is filled with visionary symbolism and imagery, it gives us at least a little peek of what heaven is like beyond our own imaginations. And it's something like church. And I don't mean church exactly like we have here. And look, uh, there's no place I would rather be than right here, right now. And there's nothing I'd rather be doing than preaching. But I don't want to do it 24-7, y'all. <laughs> you know, I don't want it to be day and night and uh, forever and ever. And I figure you don't either. So it's like church, but I want you to think about this, and this is how it's like church, according to our scripture. Think about how good it is to be here with your church family right now, our love for each other, our esteem for each other, how much what we like being together. There are all kinds of great things about being in church, but being here with each other, that's got to be right there at the top. Now try to imagine being with all the saints who've gone before us, all of them, all those loved ones we miss and thousands of millions of other saints. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Now think of it. Children of God from every place and every time, including all of us out here in the boondocks. That's where boondock saints come from, not the crazy movie. Uh, the world may tend to ignore us out here in the boondocks. They may even make fun of us. But there are no such divisions in that great multitude of saints in heaven. No one is separating themselves based on silly things, like he don't speak no good English, or her skin color isn't the same as mine, or he's from France, or even worse, he's from Massachusetts, or even worse, he's from the wrong side of horsemen. Oh, wait, that's me. Forget I said that. How good is it to be with each other today? And how incredibly, unimaginably good it will be to be there with billions of saints, with no division, only unity and love and worshiping God. More how it's like church, think about those moments in church where you have a feeling of God's presence, where you can feel the love of Christ. This is just a small foretaste of heaven. Think about being there with God in full, with Christ in full, with, their no, with no separation. You're there. That's how heaven is like church, but so much better. Think about those moments when one of the hymns sends you sorry. That moment of joy, that tingling in your spine when a hymn really gets to you. Or those times in our liturgical prayers when one of the prayers truly hits home and you feel it. Or think about those moments when God's word being preached or you're reading it clicks. It could be verses you've heard or read dozens of times. And it never really got into your head. You didn't really understand it. Or it had no particular meaning to you that day. And then one day, bang, it just clicks. You recognize it for what it is. It just becomes crystal clear. It's like it was something you had always known, but it didn't really know until that moment. And both at the same time. You're astonished. You're floored. You get it. You just got smacked in the face by the glorious truth of the word of God. Now multiply that by infinity plus one. Knowing all of God's glory in wonder, 
all of his word, all at once, all at the same time. That's how heaven will be like church, but beyond what we can fit into our human minds. By the way, one of those moments where it just clicks and you feel that word of God appears to be what's happening to John in our second reading today. He's having an emotional outburst. He's going off. There is, and I guess there always will be, debate as to whether the Apostle John is the same John who wrote Revelation. One of the things that sparks that debate is that the writing, the style used in Revelation is so very different from all the other writings attributed to John. My belief is that it is the Apostle John and this passage that we have today and others like it are why I think that. The writing here is much like what you find in Revelation. And it's because of that emotional outburst of sorts. Let me give you a few of the words again. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Boy, that's a good one right there. Sorry, I sort of just slipped into my native language. That's uh, the problem with being a hillbilly Presbyterian. Uh, the hillbilly, wants me, the hillbilly in me wants to go all backwards tent revival when I read a scripture like that. And then the Presbyterian in me kicks in and I get all confused for a second. Throughout 1 John, he's rolling along, teaching the, and revealing the word of God. And right there, at that moment that we just read, he can't contain himself. Look at the manner of God's love for us. In the, King's James, in the King James Version, that's rendered as behold. And that's a much better word because he's not just saying look at and see God's love. He's saying, see God's love, hear God's love, smell and taste God's love, feel God's love. I know there's uncertainty in the world. I know there's pain and suffering. I know that life on earth has pitfalls and dangers. But behold, the love of God. And so it goes for the saints. God's love is so great that we can begin to know him in this life. And one day we will know him completely and be like him. Behold, God's love. I want to finish up today with our gospel passage. Now, these are the Beatitudes uh, from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, these are among the most famous words ever spoken, ever written, ever read, ever heard. The beauty of the words is unsurpassed, and the beauty of the teaching is beyond all beauty in the world. But there's more than beauty here. Every passage in God's Word is multifaceted. It doesn't mean there are a bunch of different interpretations and you get to choose which one you like. I mean that every passage has multiple teachings contained within the same words. The depths of God's word is infinite. This is essentially true in all the words of the Savior. It's even more multifaceted when you're talking about the things that Jesus taught and said. And the Beatitudes contain so many facets, so many different things. I think we could spend half a year or more just examining the facets that I've studied about and I'm a novice and a neophyte at scriptural study. So who knows how deep that can go. So without taking anything away from the wondrous beauty of this teaching and the Beatitudes, I want to focus on one of those facets because it serves as a guide on how to become one of the saints we've been talking about today. The Savior's giving us an instruction manual of sorts. He's giving us the ultimate truth. So I'm going to only go through the first four of the Beatitudes because the rest of them come from or are a product of those first four Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. One thing to note is that the Beatitudes Jesus is giving us here are not describing eight different kinds of people. It's easy to read it that way, but that's not what it is. He's describing eight characteristics of one kind of person. Not eight different kinds of people, but one kind of person and eight different characteristics that kind of person has. And that kind of person he's describing is a person who has entered the kingdom of heaven. A person who was born again. A person who is a saint. So how do you know you're born again? For real. I mean, you can say it, but how do you know it? How do you know you've entered the kingdom of heaven? So let's begin with that first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now what does it mean to be poor in spirit? It means to admit that your problems are beyond you. It means you're bankrupt. 
You're poor in spirit. You don't have the resources to pay your debt. You can't manage your life. We all hate to hear that one. I've got control. I'm doing fine. You're not. You can't manage your life alone. I'm self-absorbed. I'm selfish. I can't handle my problems. That's what being poor in spirit is. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. In this instance, what does it mean to mourn? The shortest answer is you have to admit you're a sinner. That your problem that we were talking about before that you can't handle is sin. It's not just financial problems or social problems or emotional problems or psychological problems. You have an overarching problem, and that problem is sin. It's the same overarching problem that every human being since Adam and Eve has had. Even though I may be a good and decent person, I owe everything to God, but I still want to control my life. I still want to control everything. I still want to do what I decide to do and want to do. I'm still trying to be my own God. And that's the essence of sin. That's the overarching problem. Our self-absorbed, self-centered, selfish need to keep a piece or all of our lives to ourselves instead of giving it to God. Every sin is born of that sin. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now in our American definition, or our modern American definition, meek means weak, mild, wishy-washy. But that's not what meek actually means. Meekness is not weakness. It takes strength and toughness to be meek. Because it means you're teachable. It means that you know you have a problem, that you know your problem is sin, and you know you don't have any solutions or answers. And so you go to God and tell him you have to have his help. You can't do it. You have to have God's word. You have to have his teaching. You have to have his love. You have a problem. That problem is sin, and you've got no solutions, so you have to have God. That's what being meek is. So there's no entering the kingdom of heaven, no being born again, unless you take those first three steps that bring you to the fourth step. And by the way, did you notice how much this sounds like AA or another 12-step program? There's a reason 12-step programs actually work. And 12-step programs are an integral part of any kind of rehab. The reason is because those 12 steps come from the teaching of, Christ, of teachings of Christ including these Beatitudes. So let's look at the fourth one. We know the first three. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now this is certainly, we all have a desire to be righteous ourselves, but that's only a small add-on to this. You see, you can be self-righteous, but you yourself can't be righteous. You can't do it. This is about hungering and thirsting for someone else's righteousness, for the righteousness of another. This is hungering and thirsting for the righteousness of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus took our punishment. He washed away our sins with his blood. He saved us. He did that through his sacrifice, through the greatest act of love ever in the universe. Nothing can match it. And his righteousness... That one that we're hungering and thirsting for is bestowed upon us. We're not putting our record or our performance in front of God. We don't have a record or performance to speak of. We have no righteousness. But because Christ is our advocate, because Christ loves us so much that he beat back damnation. He drank the cup of God's wrath. He beat back hell itself and destroyed our condemnation through his own infinite sacrifice that he did because of his infinite love. He gives us his righteousness and we get to enter the kingdom of heaven despite the fact that we have a problem and we can't handle it and need his help. He gives it to us. Our, his righteousness becomes our righteousness. And if you're hungering and thirsting for Christ's righteousness, then you're entering the kingdom of heaven. You are born again. Behold the love of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God.
hope of all who trust in you in Christ. You weep with those who mourn even as you cry out in triumph over the grave. Unbind us from sin. Release us from captivity. And with Lazarus, raise us from death to life so that we may join the great crowd of saints who forever sing praise to your holy name through Christ, the resurrection and the life, who taught us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? What shall we give to the Lord for all his generous gifts? We shall offer to the Lord our great sacrifice of thanks. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you were rich, yet for our sake you became poor, so that through your poverty we might become rich. Accept this token and offering as a token of our gratitude for all you have done. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 430. Come sing, O Church, in joy. Number 430. Or 364. 364. Did I have it wrong? Or 364. No, let's go ahead. Let's declare it 364. Verses 1 and 3. out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you. 